yeah, thank you all again for for taking the time to stop by uh, this workshop. So I'll be covering, so I'm Jessica, I'm the developer advocate at Xerox Labs. Um, so today um, we'll be talking about building token swaps with the Xerox API. So to start off, you know, what is token swapping in this world? Um, if you've ever been to a DEX aggregator, for example, Matcha here, if um, you're making a trade from wheat to die, um, you might be wondering, you know, how is it finding me the best price in the back? Um, some other use cases for this could be, perhaps you have an index fund. Um, so for example, Future is one of our projects that integrate with us. Um, every month they rebalance. And so in order to find the best price, they use, um, they use our API to uh, do the rebalancing and finding the best trade in and trade outs. Um, other applications include wallets and portfolios. So this idea of swapping, you know, it's a kind of a little building block that can be plugged into a number of different applications. So at Xerox Labs, we cover uh, several layers of the stack. So starting at the very top, uh, Matcha is our front end user application. Um, behind that is the API, and this is what powers a lot of the other projects that I was mentioning. And then below that is the protocol. So this is a set of smart contracts, open source smart contracts that handle the trade settlement. And I'll dive a little bit into uh, each of these layers. Um, so for the remainder of the talk, just kind of overviewing, we looked at what Xerox, um, dive into how it works, and then I'll specifically talk about using the swap endpoint, which will be the uh, what we're, we're sponsoring um, prizes for at this hackathon, um, and then sharing some resources that will be useful for this hackathon. Um, so overview of Xerox. Um, so for those who are not familiar uh, with our project, um, essentially the the thesis is that all forms of value, we believe, will be tokenized. Um, and we've seen this um, expanding more and more from um, derivatives to, to um, physical items as in NFTs, um, you know, expanding into many other forms of tokenized assets. And as this market continues to grow, there's a lot of fragmentation, not only across um, different chains, but you know, across just different use um, Sorry, across different chains, um, and also you know we're looking to bridging and different layers, and so this just means more and more fragmented liquidity um, across this whole ecosystem. And we all know that markets hate fragmentation. So how do we make this simpler for applications that are trying to build the best applications for their users? Um, so we think of this in the way that um, in Web two there was a standardized protocol, so HTTP, that standardized the the transmission of data. Um, and in this way, we think about Web3. So we're standardizing the way that um, assets are transacted in this world. Um, and so kind of the high level mission is to create a tokenized world where all assets can flow freely. And so here's a bird's eye view of the Xerox ecosystem. Um, so for those who come from a more financial space, you might have heard the terms makers, so market makers and takers. Um, so we look at it into like two different parties that interface with our API. So on, I think you're right, are the makers. So these are parties that are providing liquidity, um, to, liquidity into this ecosystem. So this can include automatic market makers such as Uniswap, um, SushiSwap, as well as private market makers. Um, and then on the other side are those takers. So they're searching, they ping the API, and they find uh, orders that match what they need. So this can be wallets, Coinbase wallet uses us, MetaMask wallet, Rainbow, Rainbow wallet, um, exchanges. Uh, we also have uh, capabilities for NFT swapping capabilities. Um, but I'll fo primarily focus on ERC20 swapping capability for this uh, talk. And we do this across, right now, I think, eight uh, different EVM compatible chains. Um, so we make it super easy, you know, if you're looking to build on Polygon, um, we have that support. Um, so like, let's dive more into then how does Xerox work? So we saw at those different layers, right? Um, the protocol, which is the smart contracts, the API. For those who want to build uh, NFT swapping capabilities, we do offer an NFT swap SDK. Um, but the focus of this hackathon is on the API um, and those applications above. Um, so the API specifically, again, how it works is we're aggregating across these market makers. Um, so whether that's professional market makers who provide RFQ, so request for quote liquidity, um, as well as a number of other, uh, other 
sources of liquidity. Um, the API does various routing, so it might source maybe like the best trade is actually through a number of different hops or maybe through a number of different sources at the same time. We also factor in um, gas costs. And this is all done behind the scenes and then these applications you know, can easily leverage that without having to do that work um, on their own. So specifically when I'm talking about these orders, like what does an order look like? So here's a super simplified um, transaction um, happening. So we'll see the market maker. So I'm gonna let the GIF restart. So the market maker here uh, creates an order. So here they're saying, you know, I have this intent of either selling or buying this asset. Um, they create it, they sign it, and then they push it off chain. And then once it's off chain, um, our API can aggregate the liquidity uh, from all these different market makers. And then when the taker finds one that they like, they pick it up and then they sign it. And then once they sign it, they uh, submit it on chain. And then once it's on chain, we, our smart contract um, autonomously swaps the assets between the two, uh, the two parties' wallets. Okay, so let's dive into the API swap endpoint specifically. Um, so you know we've kind of seen this paradigm like repeated throughout the presentation. So the API is aggregating aggregating liquidity sources, um, and our API just the taker only needs to make a really simple HTTP request, um, and then from there the H the API returns this breakdown of the sources. So for example, the trade the say the trader wants to trade fifteen hundred die for ETH, perhaps the best price is. 15%, 50% from balancer, 25% from 0x liquidity, and 25% from sushi slot. So this is all just bundled together. And you know, from, from the taker side, they don't need to think about uh, what's happening. And then the response that the taker receives, um, if you're using any Web3 library, you can easily submit that directly because it's just a, a bunch, it's just a JSON object that has all the params that are needed, say for a Web3 send transaction. Um, so I kind of mentioned the API like very high level, um, but we have three three endpoints that of that are of interest. Um, I will talk specifically about uh, the quote one here. So quote um, for who I guess I should start off in the audience like who has done web development before? Okay, okay, nice. So good um, portion of, of, of the folks in the audience. So this. Um, this request probably looks very familiar to you. Um, so what it is, is we're simply breaking down, so we're simply submitting a quote to buy die for weath. So if we break it down, um, it's relatively straightforward. So the first portion is saying like which uh, network we want. So we'll have different networks and you can see a list of them. This one specifically for ETH mainnet. The next section is for the quote request. So as you'll see, swap quote. So we're asking for a quote. Um, the next one is uh, which token that we want to receive in this trade. Um, so here we said we want DAI, and then we're asking, say, we want to sell WEATH in this trade. And then in this, um, in this uh, situation, we're selling, um, I think it's 100, oh, sorry, one WEATH. And so this is in the base unit of uh, the sell token. And so if you make that query, say, if, you know, from your browser, from just like a curl request, here I'm putting it in a Postman, um, you'll see you get this JSON, JSON object back. Um, and you'll see here what's uh, what's in that object. You know, we saw the chain ID up above. Here it's looking at the different sources. Um, you'll see at SushiSwap, proportion is one, so this trade was best 100% through SushiSwap. And then as we continue down, uh, we'll see some other parameters that have, are, are of interest. So, you know, maker token, taker token, um, some other um, some other data that's, that's uh, necessary for making a transaction. And so it's, yeah, it's super straightforward. You're just making this HTTP request and then you get, um, the, you, get the, you get the values that you need to submit that as a valid transaction. Um, so three simple steps to, to use the API endpoint. Uh, one, for those who have not used this, uh, sorry, sent a transaction before, um, you'll need to set a token allowance. And this is meaning we are allowing our contracts to make that transaction for you because as, we saw on that GIF earlier, you know, we're going through the protocol um, and it's, it's making that atomic trade. So it's a pretty standard practice um, and we have some code snippets to help with that if you have any questions. Um, you fetch the swap quote, which was the quote that we saw earlier. 
and then you're just going to sign that transaction with your favorite Web3 library. Um, so in code, what it looks like is the first couple of constants up above, um, you might be getting that from the UI. Um, so up above where you have the die, um, the ETH, you probably get that from the UI. Um, the next section here is the setting of the token allowance. Um, and then here is the fetch, um, fetch swap quote. And so that's what it looks like um, in JSON if we're using certain, um, certain libraries to make our lives easier. And then lastly, we're just using Web3 to send transaction. So we're taking that response and then passing it in. And then from there, it's, it's, uh, it's a submitted transaction um, onto the blockchain. OK, so I just talked about quote. Um, but there are two other, um, two other endpoints that I want to call out. So price, I would recommend using price if you just want to query for, uh, query for, query for a quote. So think of it as like the read-only version. And I say that because when you use quote, uh, we're pinging these market makers. So you know they have an intent. And if, they're, if we say, hey, uh, there's a taker on the other side that's interested, then they've already um, set aside this order for, for the taker. So we don't want to keep pinging market makers um, with quotes, and then they keep setting aside orders. Um, they're going to get frustrated. It's going to you know, block off liquidity for people. So if you if you just want to show like a a uh, show a price to your user, um, use price first, and then once it's committed, then use quote. And the the params for that are almost identical. You can just take a look in our documentation. And then source, uh, you can see all the sources for our particular network. So yeah, it makes it easy to see like where um, where we're sourcing from. And we're continuing to, continuing to add um, liquidity sources uh, for, for all networks as well. Um, so for those who are building, um, there's this tutorial in our documentation. Um, it goes through step by step exactly how you could build a token swapped app. So very similar to our Matcha app. Um, it covers you know, how to query a token list. So for example, if you go to any, um, any swap interaction, you know, you, your user can pull up a list. So using CoinGecko for that, um, and then walking through how to use the endpoint, token allowance, um, and then connecting that user to MetaMask so their trade can be submitted. Um, so highly recommend taking a look there if you're building. Um, yeah, lastly then is just kind of like why use ZeroX? Uh, so it's, I think a lot of our teams that integrate with us, they think it's, well, a lot of what they've said is, you know, they like that we specialize in this in this field, and so it takes the burden off of them. Um, so we have some stats here, um, you know, 99% uptime, 2% uh, revert rate, uh, which is 10 times lower than our competitors, and then 1.5 uh, second response time. So just you know, making it really quick for uh, our integrators. And like less on the, I guess, stats side is some like interesting features that we offer. So. Um, for example, if there's, uh, if there's positive slippage, meaning when there's a trade being made, if at any point um, the user could get a better deal, um, well, we don't collect any of that. We actually give that back to the user. Um, and so this is kind of a unique thing um, across DEX aggregators. Um, so we, we, we definitely have our users first, so uh, that's a big point of ours. And then similarly, um, slippage protection. So baked into our API, we have um, heuristics that look at how likely it is that a certain trade will be attacked by MEV. And if it is, then we route it away. So you don't even need to think about that. So it's, yeah, it's baked into the API. And if you want to learn more about how we do that, um, then yeah, I'm happy to talk with you about uh, the data that our team has done to uh, bake this in. Um, lastly, so we have continuing to build out more and more tooling for teams that are using um, our API, uh, one including the Xerox Explorer. So this is like a proprietary dashboard for teams that use our endpoint. Um, you can see all the trades that are going through your uh, going through your your project. Um, you can like dig into the sort of trades that are happening, um, and yeah, it's really I guess powerful for for projects and their data teams to have this information. Um, and yeah, we're continuing to uh, build this out even more. Um, so specifically for the hackathon. Let's talk about some resources. So at the hackathon, we'll be offering three prizes. 
Uh, so rather open-ended, we just want to see how teams are using the swap endpoint. Um, and specifically, this is for ERC-20 trades. Um, and so we're offering 5,000, 3,000, and 2,000. Um, so here are just some project ideas, but you know, happy to brainstorm some ideas with you. You know, we've seen a continuing growing number of uh, DeFi applications, um, and there's a lot of different novel use cases beyond, again, just the basic portfolio and wallet um, as we're expanding more into um, like retail user use cases, like how, how can we um, like integrate this more, say, into the index funds, um, even like, um, like, what's it called? Uh, what are those things called? Mm, like gift cards, perhaps transactionals. Um, and then again, marketplaces, wallets, um, tooling, in-game currency, um, I think is interesting. So say you have an experience, you don't want to push your users off of your platform. You want to, you then have the capability to keep it all in-house, right? So say they're playing a game and you, they need to make some sort of trade in, uh, within the app, so then you, you can customize that. Your app can actually um, earn revenues from that directly as opposed to like pushing them off to a third-party exchange. And then, yeah, just whatever you can imagine. Um, here are the judging criteria. I'm sure you've seen this. Um, you can also just find this on the website. Uh, so some things I want to call out are um, if you could use, yeah, oh, sorry, making sure that you use the affiliate address parameter. Um, so that's just uh, a parameter that links to um, the, a wallet address that's related to your project. And this helps us um, be able to help generate that, that dashboard for you. Um, I got other things looking at you know, technical information, implementation, um, how creative and adoptable is this project. Um, let's see, so on the judging criteria side, um, you've, oh sorry, these are some of the requirements and again, you'll see these on the website. Um, so just making sure you have the description, um, a public repo, and then if you have, if you could put together a short video to just explain your project, um, I'm sure you're doing this for other projects as well. Uh, so not, not much new stuff. Um, and then lastly, I will uh, share a QR code later to links with these resources. So Git docs and GitHub repos if you're interested. Okay, um, so this is the last slide. This is just a slide for this deck if you need any resources. Um, but yeah, happy to stay here to answer questions. And thanks again for taking the time to stop at this workshop.